Hey guys, how's it going? Oh, let me take off my face mask. There we go. Because we're making this 2020-2021. We had to wear a face mask to come to school. Stay safe, COVID. So uh, in case you missed uh, some of these problems that we did in class, we'll just kind of jot through them real fast. But really, we want to jump to the homework because that's where it's at. So this is a two-step equation here where we have minus 5 to both sides, and that's going to give us 24. And then 4a is the same as 4 times a, and so to undo times, we divide. Divide by 4, divide by 4, so then a equals 24. You've got to do, divide to one side, you've got to divide to the other side, just like we minus to both sides, the negative 5. So 24 divided by 4 is 6, and that's going to be our answer. You can even plug it back in. 6 times 4 is 24. And 24 plus 5 is 29. Nice. So that's excellent. Check. Um, this one, we uh, combined the negative 16 with a 5. So then we got what? Uh, with a positive 5. If you did like a number line and you went negative 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 4, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. So just going five of them, of course, we'd go negative 16, negative 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. So that's going to be negative 11 because we went five, which is to the right, a distance of five. Nice, nice. And then let me also, eh, eh, eh. Now feel free to fast forward me, fast forward or rewind. And uh, definitely in any of my videos, you can skip around till you get the problem or help that you need. So skip these if we already did these in class, which we did. But I've got my online learners. Yo, what's up, online learners? Thank you for being with me still online. Thanks for learning. So this is what we did in class. And so we did one, two, three steps solving equations here. So we went ahead and just combined the 5 with the negative 16. And then we went ahead and added 11 to both sides, and so we got 30. Yeah. And then we brought down our 3b, and so 3b equals 30, and then we divided by 3, divided by 3. So we got 10. And if you plug that back in, 10 times 3 is 30. 30 minus 16 is 14. 14 plus 5 is 19. It works. Um, so then, number three, we just distributed, distributed that through, and we got 3c. Three, 3 times c is 3 times c, and <laughs> 3c. And then 3 times 7 is 21. And then we minus 21 to both sides. And so we combined two big negative numbers, and we got negative 48. And then we brought down our 3c. And then we went ahead and divided by 3, divided by 3, and we got negative 16. Which, when you plug it back in, it works. This one is already factored, 4, actually, so all we have to do is set each side equal to 0. And so if we add 4 to both sides, we get d equals 4. And then d equals just d equals 0. So those are our two answers. And when you plug them back into the original equation, they work. Because if you plug a 0 in for d, there and there, you get 0 times negative 4 is just 0. And if you plug a, neg uh, plug a positive 4 in there, 4 minus 4 is 0 on this side. So 4 times 0 is, again, 0. And so that works. Cool. So now we're going to get into the uh, homework here. Don't think we need to do this necessarily. I think we had this last year. But it might appear on a quiz on Canvas. So maybe I'll, I'll probably just choose one of those, right? Possibly there. Okay, so here's more of our notes. If in case you were uh, not well or sick or something and you're at home, or if you're one of my online learners, we're doing solving quadratic notes. So now at this point, I guess if you're watching this video, um, Probably this will be more notes, and then I'll just do another video with the homework. So if you want to stop this video now and just jump to the homework, you can. Um, if you're like if you've already seen it, if you're already in class with me, then go to the next video. But if not, definitely keep watching and take some good notes here, especially if you're an online learner. Online learner, you know who you are. Twenty odd of you. Thanks for being with me as an online learner. 
So our first example, go and get your pen or pencil. I'm going to wait. Go get your pencil. That's it. Get your paper out. Go ahead and take these good notes here to help you on the homework. Nice. So this is called the square root method. Can you guess why? <laughs> Did you get your paper pen? Don't just watch. You got to write it down and learn. Okay, so with our square root method, we square rooted. And we square rooted both sides to solve for x. So x equals the square root of 25. And the square root of 25 is just 5. But then we learned in class that it's not just a positive 5 because since negative 5 times negative 5 is also a positive 25, that means that we have to also remember our negative 5 is also a solution. So if you square root both sides, just don't forget, you got a, you got a plus and a minus there. What the? Um, what you doing? Wow, it's a big minus symbol. You bold? There we go. Okay, so don't forget plus or minus 5. Now, factoring. We're going to be doing that all year long. All year. All year long. All year. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to be factoring for the rest of the year. So come see me or Google Meet with me if you're struggling on any of our factoring there to remind you how to factor. This is our basic factoring where we just take x squared. There's more complicated ones. And so we factor it into x and x. Good. And then we take the 2, and what are factors of 2? Well, 1 and 2 are factors of 2. And um, so that 2 factors into 1 and 2 as well. And then, let's see, we got a plus symbol going on there, and another one there. So that means more than likely this will be plus and plus. We'll get harder ones that we'll show you in the future, but that's just our basic factoring. Now to make sure it works, we multiply the nose and the mouth. Smiley face. And so 1 times x is just 1x. And then 2 times x is 2x. And 2x plus, or combined with, 1x with a positive 2x is 3x. Nice. And why did I do that? Just to prove that we got the right answer. So the correct answer for this one is x plus 1 times x plus 2 is our correct factoring. And so that's called the factoring method. Now, really, if we we're solving for x, we would actually go one step further. Can't remember if I did this in class or not. But then at this point, we'd go ahead and set them each equal to 0. And then you'd minus 1 to the other side and minus 2 to the other side. So we'd actually get two solutions, x equals negative 1 and x equals a negative 2. And you definitely want to plug both of those in to make sure they work. So negative 1 squared is a positive 1. Negative 1 with a 3 is um, a negative 3. Good. And then plus 2. And that's true because a 2 plus a 1 is a 3. And 3 minus 3 is 0. Check. Plug a negative 2 in. You get uh, negative 2 squared is negative 2 squared is um, 4. And so 4, and then 3 with the negative 2 is negative 6, and then plus 2. And 4 plus 2 is 6, minus 6 is 0. It works. So those are our two solutions, negative 1 and negative 2. Excellent. So fire drill, we had it. Thanks for being there for that. <laughs> there we go. So we're going to shrink it that, put that up there. And that too, why not? Woo! Okay, so next is called the complete square method. And so it would be good to watch this video and review how to do this. Um, but if you need to jump straight to the homework video too because of time or because you've already seen it, then go ahead and do that. Okay, so Z, complete the square method. <laughs> so the complete the square method goes something like this. So you bring down the x squared plus the 2x, and then you have a blank space. We're all right, your name. And then what we do is we, uh, this is called the B value, okay? So if I come over here just for some extra notes, this is like AX squared plus BX plus C. And so to do complete the square, you have to take the B, you have to divide by 2, and then you have to square it. So this is like the formula, the formula for completing the square. And so our b value, we're going to identify it. There's our b value. 
So we're going to take two, and then I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, do it in green this time for the formula part. Formula in green. There we go. What the? Little, you little. There we go. That's still super thick. I don't know why it's so thick, but oh well. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take the 2. We're going to divide by 2. That's the formula. Take the 2, divide by 2, and square it. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 1 squared is 1. So this is the magic number that came from our formula, right? We took 2, <coughs> and we divided by 2, and we squared it. Awesome. Okay. Um, so then when we did that, we got 1. So we're going to go ahead and add 1. But if you do it to one side, you have to do it to the other side. <coughs> so what you're going to do next, excellent, is, why it says thin? Why does it want it to be thick all the time, you little, there we go. Okay, so what we're going to do next now, after we've done that formula there, is we can simply add that 1 with that 24. So now we're going to have 25 on that side of the equal sign. Then this whole step over here, we're actually going to do some factoring, right? This is called completing the square. And so we're going to go ahead and factor this sucker, which uh, we already did up there, remember? Oh, no, we did something else up there. Never mind. So that factors into x and x. What are factors of 1? 1 and 1. Why did we use 1? Because 1 is a perfect square, by the way. So we're going to take 1, and uh, the symbols will be plus and plus. So now here's the trick to it. How many... So how many, how many, how many x plus 1s do I have? That's a good question. I don't know why, but I want to get rid of this thing there with the lines. How do I get rid of that? Eh, eh. There you go. Okay, there we go. Okay, so how many x plus 1s do I have? I have two of them. So I'm going to write it as x plus 1 all squared, because that means we have an x plus 1 and an x plus 1. Excellent. Equals 25. Now, that's probably the part you're going to be looking for on the multiple choice on the complete the square method. That's like the, we call it maybe like the middle section on Canvas. Um, I'm going to double check just to show you really quick there. So we're going to, just because I'm really curious now actually. So it would be good for you to check though. So we're going to go to our math 3. Because I don't know if it has you do the whole thing in complete the square. I mean, I'm teaching it to you, which is great. Um, but not published yet, so I don't know if you'll be able to see this yet there. But when we get to the canvas part, I want to take a look and uh, see how that's set up there with complete the square. Here we go. Okay. Oh, that's solving radicals. Where's complete the square? Sorry. Back to dashboard. And then math. There we go. Oh, here it is. Boot camp. Solving and factoring. There we go. Okay, so we're going to preview that sucker. And so this is where you navigate, lots of scrolling. Okay, so solving and factoring, good, good. And then, ooh, here it is. Give me the middle step when you're solving it by completing the square. Let's take a look at some of those answers. Yeah, so this is kind of the, I mean, we shouldn't stop there, definitely not. But this, this is the part of the completing the square on the homework that you're going to look for your answer. Okay, right there. But don't stop there as far as completing the squares go. So what you're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and solve for x. So in order to solve for x, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that power 2 there by square rooting it. Ah, got the bird. And if you do it to one side, you have to do it to the other side. So then that gets rid of the 2, so we're just left with x plus 1 is equal to. Remember what we did before, the square root of 25 is what? 5, but it's plus or minus, huh? That's true. Remember when you square root both sides, do plus or minus. So we're actually going to have two solutions going on on this complete the square problem. We're going to minus 1 to the other side, and so we're going to end up with x equals negative 1 plus 5 and negative 1 minus 5. So we're going to have plus 5 and minus 5. We're going to get two solutions. 5 minus 1 is 4. And then negative 5 and negative 1 is a negative 6. So x equals two solutions. Let's make sure they both work. So if you plug a 4 in here, back to the original, back to the original, 
4 squared is 16, plus 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 plus 16 is 24. Nailed it. Then plug a negative 6 in there. Negative 6 squared is negative 6 times negative 6, which is 36. Plus negative 6 times 2 is actually a negative 12. And 36 minus 12 is 24 again. So it works. So both solutions work. Last but not least in our notes, and then we'll jump to the homework, is the quadratic formula. Last one, quadratic formula. Thanks for watching this video. Okay, so then here's our quadratic formula here to help you be beautiful. Really, this would be good for online learners as well as uh, people in my classroom. And let me make sure this video is still going because that would be bad. Is it still going? Do I see it? It is. I got to hurry though. 15 minutes is a long time. Okay, so is we haven't even taught this yet. So you're like, whoa, I already know how to do the quadratic formula renewable because I watched your video. Thanks. Okay, so quadratic formula 3x squared plus 4x minus 12. So here's the formula. Do an into row, row, row your boat. Sick. So it goes like this. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a times c. 4ac all over 2a. Hey! So that's our formula with row, row, row your boat. Memorize it. Nice. Okay, so we're actually going to apply that formula, but first we've got to identify our a, b, and c. So it's just the numbers. So a is 3, b is 4, and c is negative 12. So you're just going to go ahead and ignore, just going to go ahead and ignore the um, x's for now. Right? Don't even worry about those while we're doing the quadratic um, because they don't come along in the formula at all. So now we're going to do x equals negative b. So b is 4, so we're going to do a negative 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 4 squared, minus a 4, because that's part of the formula. <laughs> so I'll put that in red because that's the formula. Right, that's part of the formula. So is the plus or minus, so is the square root, so is the square root even, really. So that's all formula. So then we have our a and our c. Now remember, it's negative 4, but technically you want to make sure you multiply these. So a is a 3, and c is a negative 12. And the reason why I say to multiply all these is because I can already see here that you might make a mistake there because, right, because there's a negative and another negative. Do you see those? So be careful there. All over 2a, which is 2 times 3. So now we have x equals negative b, so negative 4 plus or minus the square root of. So 4 squared is 16. And we have a negative 4 times 3, okay, is, ready, ready, is a 12. Um, but we also have negative times a negative is a positive. So those are just going to cancel out. Now, 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 times 12 is 144. Nice. All over 2a, which is 2 times 3, which is 6. Beautiful. Finishing up our problem here. So then we get uh, x equals negative 4 plus or minus. So 16 and 144, hmm. well, 6 plus 4 is 10, so that brings it up to 150, plus 10 is 160. So we get the square root of 160 all divided by 6. Now I would like to circle that as my answer, but this even numbers all around makes me think I might be able to reduce. So we're just going to have to do 160 off to the side. And we're going to have to start factoring that sucker. So I'm thinking, what, like maybe 10 and 16. That becomes 160. Then we'll factor it more. So that's going to be 2 times 5. And then 16 factors into 4 times 4. In fact, isn't 16 a perfect square? Oh my goodness. OMG, it is. So that means that this is a pair that's actually going to be able to come out of our radical. So the square root of 160 is actually the same as, um, pull out a 4, just one of them, pull out a 4. So it's going to be 4 and then the square root of 10, right? So all I did was take that 16. Let me show you what I did. 
I basically like square rooted both, and then the square root of 16 is just 4. And then 10, just radical 10 just goes there. So then that's going to help us with simplification um, in our problem here. So now we do x equals negative 4 plus or minus that 4 that we pulled out, and the radical 10 we'll leave alone. Now we can reduce it. So we're going we can all the four, the four, and the six are not divisible by four, but they are divisible by two. So now we have negative four divided by two is negative two. Plus or minus four divided by two is two. The radical ten comes along for the ride. You cannot mess with that because that's a decimal. And then six divided by two is three. So that'll be our answer there. That'll be our answer. Just to show you some stuff there, why we can't divide that ten there specifically is because radical 10 is actually not even at all. It's 3.16. Okay. Also to show you that we did reduce that 160 correctly, take a look here. That's exactly the same as 4 times radical 10. Remember? Bam! Proved it with our calculator. Okay, thanks for watching. You, thanks for watching. Online learners, thanks for watching. And then my another video will be on the homework. So thanks for watching. Peace out. Thanks for watching. I'll put my mask back on. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching.